Hello. So I read 14 books this week, eight fiction, five non-fiction and one graphic novel. After I discuss the books, I'm going to talk about my reading plans for next week. The first book is The Many Deaths of Leila Starr by Ram B and Philippe Andrade. So this is a graphic novel and it's about the avatar of death coming to live a mortal life in Mumbai as Layla Starr because someone has been prophesied to end death and start immortality for humans. So I like the illustrations in this book. I rated it three stars overall though because it just the premise was really cool. I love that whole thing of like gods being put into mortal bodies and learning about humanity in some way but it just didn't I didn't get the feels I wasn't invested I didn't particularly like any of the characters so it wasn't it sort of let me down in a way I had high hopes for it but like I said the illustrations were pretty so three stars next we have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston um, this is about Florence Day she is a ghostwriter for a very famous romance author she can also see ghosts um, and she meets her new editor who's handsome and she has an instant attraction to and then all of a sudden he winds up as a ghost on her doorstep and it's not giving me away it's in the blurb um, this was really fun I rated it four stars I had a good time I struggle to find sort of contemporary romances I like I know this one isn't completely contemporary it does have a supernatural element to it and maybe that's what I need I think maybe that's what I need in a romance book otherwise it just doesn't do it for me it was really cute I love the main character I think the last time you saw me I was almost all the way through and I said I think it's going to be a four star and that's exactly what it is um, the yeah the main character was my cup of tea I found a lot of similarities between myself and them the romance was okay I was hoping for a bit more oomph. The ending was not what I thought it was going to be. So I was sort of bracing myself for something else and then something different happened. So it was a bit jarring. Um, but yeah, I like most of it. It's corny, it's cheesy. I have a feeling that's how a lot of romance books are though. So I still enjoyed it, it was a fun time. Next I read I May Be Wrong and Other Wisdoms from Life as a Monk by Bjorn Thigo Lindeblad. Carolyn Bankler and David Madiri. Um, so it's, this is translated. I gave this three stars. I love books about monks. It's sort of one of my favorite topics. So I've read a lot of them, Sylvie. And this one was just, it didn't do enough for me. I didn't really jive with the main character, the, the author, I guess, <laughs> it's, it's, it's nonfiction. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was, I don't know, it lacked that magic. It lacked that sort of, sense of peace that I normally get in books about the monks lives um so yeah it just wasn't definitely wasn't up there it's okay but for me didn't quite hit the spot next we have eat weeds a guide to foraging how to identify harvest eat and used wild plants by Diego Veneto I'll show you the insides um I didn't rate this one because it's sort of almost like a cookbook to me but I love learning about hey <laughs> Sylvie learning about plants um, that you can find in your own backyard. And look at the spine of this, how cute is that? Um, so I love this. I thought this was done really well. It was really accessible. There's not a huge amount of information on it, um, but they do talk about the plants, identifying it as food. And yeah, it's it's pretty much everything you need in a easily digestible format. So this was really fun and I enjoyed it a lot. Then I read, Adult Assembly Required by Abby Waxman. Um, so this is about Laura Costello, sweetheart. Go that way. And she decides to move away from her family. She moves to Los Angeles. She's had a traumatic car accident that left her injured and sort of changed the course of her life. And she has a lot of sort of bad luck, but then ends up in this house with a mix of quirky characters. It's sort of like a found family situation. And one of the characters in the house is a, okay, they call him the impossibly handsome Bob. He's a gardener. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. I gave it three stars. It's okay. I, I have yet to find like a completely contemporary romance that I really like. So if anyone has a recommendation, let me know. 
Otherwise I'm starting to feel like maybe contemporary romance just really isn't for me. Um, but that being said, like I didn't hate, hate it. It's just, it's just meh for me, this, these sorts of stories personally, but yeah, it was okay. My favorite character in the story was probably the house and the garden. <laughs> so. so this is 52 Ways to Walk by Annabelle Streets. The surprising science of walking for wellness and joy one week at a time. So it has different topics. This one says walk amid trees and it talks about the gases and molecules produced by trees. I think they're called whitened sides. I can't quite remember. And the scientific reasons of why that benefits you walk with purpose. Like there's some that are ones you would think walk beneath the full moon, walk with your nose and some that you wouldn't think of doing. Like there was like walk with the wind. Um, but it was, it's very cute. It's fun. It's easy to read. It's something a little bit different. I thought I would be bored with a book all about walking, but yeah, I, I breezed through it in, in a few hours and uh, I did enjoy it. I thought it was cute and there's some things I might do, like I might walk in the rain because of the negative ions, you know, get that boost. But yeah, this was 52 Ways to Walk and I rated it 3.75 stars. Next, we have The Book of Gothel by Mary McMinn. This is a like retelling of the story Rapunzel. This was not what I was expecting. So I gave this 4.25 stars. It was really interesting. I, I was just expecting, you know, after seeing Tangled, you know, Mother Knows Best, Mother Gothel, but it was not that at all. It had really interesting characters. I loved the main character. I thought she was awesome. Hailwise, um, the love story was okay. It's not really like it's very tinged. It's bittersweet. Um, but it was well well done and it wasn't super predictable, which I do also like. I don't necessarily always want a stock standard happily ever after. But this was really interesting. There was a lot of, it's a, it's a fantasy book. Um, I could not stand the grandmother. Did not like that character at all. Um, but overall, I did enjoy this and I was pleasantly surprised. So this is, I might even move it to my favourites on Goodreads. Sometimes I put books as low as four on my favourites if I just really enjoyed it and, and I still think about it a few days after. But yeah, this I was pleasantly surprised by the book of Gothel. Then I read How to Be You by Simone de Beauvoir and the Art of Living Authentic. It's written by Sky Cleary. So I I saw the cover and I just thought, oh, it's by Simone de Beauvoir and I've wanted to read her stuff and then I realised, oh, it's not. It's about her writings, but somebody else is talking about them. Um, so Simone de Beauvoir has a lot of like existentialist sort of philosophical writings and the author pairs them with sort of everyday life things. So this is her views on friendship and love and motherhood and aging and death and rebellion. It was okay. Um, I think I rated it at three stars. So it was okay. I didn't love it. Um, and it wasn't what I was expecting. So that's my own fault. Next, I read Isaac and the Egg by Bommy Palmer. Um, Isaac stands alone on a bridge and screams into the river below. Something screams back and that, like everything which follows is unforgettable. This is really bizarre. So I gave this three stars. It's sort of contemporary, but it's got a very fantastical element. So magical realism. You sort of also don't really know if what is happening is happening or if it's being imagined because the main character is going through a heavy grief. So grief is like the main theme of this book. Um, yeah, this, the egg. So yeah, the egg is sort of this being that comes into the protagonist's life and we're sort of made to believe that it's an alien species and he sort of, with his, through his relationship with the egg, sort of heals and comes to these realizations and finds his way out of the darkness. Um, and there's a sort of twist at the end. So not everything is, is shown immediately. So it's sort of a very unreliable narrator sort of thing. It was, like I said, I gave it three. It's okay. I didn't love it. And um, yeah, it's, it'll probably stay in my mind because it's odd. It's got the quirky factor, I guess. A dude and an egg thing being, but um, yeah, it wasn't for me like fantastic. Then I read Alice Hart, The Magnificent Book, Magnificent Book of Vegetables. I'll just show you some of the things. I think Alice Hart in general is really great at doing amazing vegetarian cookbooks. Um, this is their, her latest one. So my kids are mostly vegetarian. We all used to be vegan. I was vegan for like 20 years, vegetarian for 10 years. So 30 years of just not eating meat 
or almost any um, animal products whatsoever. So yeah, my kids are vegetarian. They were vegan. I was vegan. For that, I was vegetarian. I'm now, I'd say an omnivore, but I eat maybe animal products once, maybe twice a week, and that includes any animal products, so eggs or dairy or meat. I only eat one or two times a week. But um, I'm always looking for ways to expand my children's uh, food and tastes and palate. Uh, you know, kids, they, some most children have very bland palates and they just like white things and just salt and sugar. Um, but this is great. I've already cooked one of the recipes from here, which I'll talk about in my um, craft cafe segment, which I'm going to film next week. And it was really tasty and delicious. And I'm looking forward to cooking some more from it. Next, I read A Broken Blade by Melissa Blair. Henceforth, the king shall only recognize two species of citizens of the crown, mortals and dark fae. So this book, this is a special edition copy that I have that has end papers and all this, all this jazz, all this fanciness. Um, it's a bit YA. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I gave it three and a half stars, but when the time came to do this vlog, I completely forgotten everything about it. It was gone. And I'm like, did I read this? Well, I've, I've marked it as three and a half stars and read. But if you ask me like what happened, I have a very brief vision of it. It's sort of, you know, there's a woman who's a halfling and has to work for the king as their blade and kill their own kind. And then there's her rival who keeps besting her and then they come together. And yeah, um, I obviously thought it was a bit more than average. I gave it three and a half, which means it was enjoyable, but I will not be interested in continuing on. <laughs> I just it's just gone into that sometimes I just have this like void where some books just get yeeted into the void and they're gone and it's like oh I sort of remember reading this but I really don't so that was the broken blade I read every version of you by Grace Chan so this is the late 21st century Australia um set in the future very dystopian I, I really wanted to read something that was set in Australia I thought that was really cool to have landmarks and that that I'm familiar with um the main character is Tao Yi and she has a partner Navin and everyone is sort of in a hyper immersive hyper consumerist virtual reality called Gaia so it's sort of like they all log on the, the real world is like barren and a wasteland and awful so they all go in these pods and connect to this other virtual place and it gets to the point where they are saying we can actually upload your conscious consciousness there permanently and the majority of the planet gets in on that and it's sort of like her struggles with do I join everyone there do I live a life on earth you know it, it was really well done at first I thought well, I don't know if I'm in, into it sometimes I love dystopian and sci-fi sort of books sometimes I don't but I did get into this so that's saying something because I wasn't really in the mood when I picked it up I just wanted to read it so I could send it back to the library but then I really enjoyed myself I ended up giving it 3.75 so it's not quite a four star but it is better than average and yeah I did in the end enjoy it. Then I read Send Me Their Souls by Sarah Wolf. so this is a third in an installment. The downside with this book is that I read the other first two so long ago, so long ago that I have forgotten everything that happens and it was very, un in that case I know I should just go back and reread the other two books but I just have so little time so many books that I want to read that I thought no I'm just gonna go in and hopefully you know I remember and yeah it's it's a bit bizarre it's a fantasy book with these like beings all different beings and different magic and there's witches against like humans and beneathers and uh Valkorax so all of these different beings and they've sort of been dominated um the humans have been like massacring witches and all that sort of thing and they all hate the Valkyrax and the Beneathers kill the Valkyrax and you've got these heartless creatures so the witches sort of get a human that's been killed or they kill a human and they cut out their heart and they bring the human back to life and they keep their heart and that human is like a warrior so they're immortal even if they get chopped up and stuff they will somehow come back to life and they are made to sort of protect their witches and the witches control them so the main character is a heartless Zera um, and she's sort of been passed from person to person. Obviously I can't talk a lot about it because it's the third one in the series. I rated it 
my issues with it, it's hard to say because I, the other book, the second one in the series, I rated five stars. So I'm like, I really love that one. Um, but once again, I don't really remember it at all. And I, there was a time in Goodreads where I didn't rate or put my books down at all. So there's so many books that are just gone. Um, but there's also, when I was sort of getting back into it, I wasn't reviewing, writing anything whatsoever. So I can't recall my collections about it. But this one, there was a lot of, like the dialogue felt stilted. Like there was so much sarcastic, quippy, snarky dialogue that it felt forced. It didn't feel authentic. It was just trying to do like this constant like jabs and, and banter and I was starting to get, felt inauthentic and it sort of took me out of it a bit. And the romance was very PG, um, which I wouldn't expect from these two characters, but I guess that's the book. But I was like, was the romance is PG in the last one? Or maybe I thought there was like a slow burn build up and then in the combination, I'm like, is that it? There was, it was just, I don't know. I think it was just too long between reading the others. And I think that's with a series, I tend to normally like start series, series that are already completed because that way I can just go with the momentum, get on that train until the last station. Whereas when you're doing it book by book, and obviously there's a lot of years in between before I can get a copy of whatever is else. Like I just totally forgot about this. I decided to go to the start of my two read list and think what's the oldest ones on there. And I was like, oh, hot damn. <laughs> This one's been out for a while, I should get onto that, but by this stage, it's just, yeah, the momentum's gone and you sort of plunge into a world that you don't remember and, yeah, but, you know, um, as a whole, I'd probably still recommend the series. I think I gave the first one, first one four stars, the second five, and this one three and a half, so it's still pretty decent to me. The last book I read is Babel or Babel, an arcane history by R.F. Kuang. I decided to give the book a three and a half stars, which I know is not the popular opinion. I listened to this on audiobook. It was over 22 hours. That is a long time. It's a historical book about Oxford back in the day and these. It's a very generally contemporary modern world, but there is a magical element that involves the use of silver and by inscribing two different words on the, the bars of silver. So you choose like the English word and then the equivalent in French or Mandarin or whatever word it is, the part that's sort of lost in that translation because it's sometimes never a complete alignment between the two meanings of the words, that little part creates some sort of magic effect depending on what it is that's the difference between the two words. It also has all of this background stuff in that comes into play. So it's got, you know, talks about racism, classism, uh, oppression, a whole a sexism, just a whole smorgasbord of issues, political issues, there's a huge amount of subject matter in it. But for me personally, I found too much, it could have been condensed, heavily condensed. It did not need to be as long as it was. And I think that really affected the pacing. It really affected my enjoyment of the novel. A lot of the novel is more heavily based on the academics. So the study of language, because the main character Robin is brought to Oxford from his mainland, um, China is where he's from, because he's fluent obviously in Cantonese and they then, train him in Latin and ancient Greek and English and all that sort of thing to become one of the babelists or the people that translate so they make the silver bars. Also, like I find the study of language, etymology, linguistics, all that stuff interesting. It takes up like 90, not 90% of the book, but it takes up a large percentage of the book and it was too bogged down with the academics. I wanted to know more about the plot, the intrigue, the there's like a society that is against sort of the capitalist machinations of Oxford and England, so to speak. There's the, the hint of like the poppy wars to come because the opium um, is in play here and sort of all of their greed and corruption. And I wanted to more about that and less about like the academics, scholarly pursuits, sitting there talking about this word and that word and that word. Um, it was just, it bogged the story down. So it was extremely well written. I need to say that immediately. So well written. I can see that it was very well researched. I didn't, you know, background check all the information, but I'm pretty sure R.F. Kuang, like, you know, got their shit nailed down. It was, I was amazed at the amount of historical, you know, facts and obviously research that went into this novel. So kudos to that. Um, the characters though, I didn't bond to them. So you spend so much time with these characters, but I felt Robin too was just really <sighs> inept. <laughs> And the more the story went along, the more just like 
passive and I just didn't enjoy his character. I didn't think that he was a great main character to have. Um, his brother, on the other hand, amazing but also problematic, but we didn't really like it. There were some interesting characters, like Big 12 was sort of interesting. Professor Craft at the end was interesting, but you don't really get to know them as much. And it's just, I don't know, I just didn't feel, it's supposed to be sort of like a found family between Robin and the other students that are in his cohort that he sort of bonds with, but I didn't, I didn't feel that at all. There was one character where I sort of saw the duplicity a mile away a mile away but you know ah, oh, we've been betrayed like did you not see it coming the writing was on the wall like from the beginning so there were a lot of things that eh, were just meh for me and it's one of those books where it's just been so overhyped so you can't help but go in with a bit of expectation and I'm like yeah it's a good book um it's not fantastic and I'm not you know I can't rave about it and be like this changed my life and I just stopped thinking about it as soon as I went on to the next book. So that was Babel. So that is everything that I have read this week. So next week I'm planning on reading books from the Goodreads end of year, vote for your favourite book event thing. I've read already quite a few on that list and I want to read a few more just so I can have a few more options that I can sort of pair against each other before I vote and I thought I'd then share my votes. Some of the books that I'm going to be reading are All the Living and the Dead, A Personal Investigation into the Death Trade by Halle Campbell. So there's a, a non-fiction one. Girls Can Kiss Now by Jill Gutowitz. I think this was in the poetry, I think. I can't remember what category that was in, but that's definitely one I want to read. Time is a Mother by Ocean Wong. So that was in the poetry. Um, I've just tried to pick some more from categories that I may not have read any or only like one book in. I also plan on reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry so I can read a romance one. So there's a whole bunch of other ones that I've, I'm have i going to have on my Kindle or that I'm still waiting this week to come in from the library. But I thought that would be fun. And then after that, I'm thinking about doing a reading vlog, but I'm not sure which books that I should read for the reading vlog. If there's any book that you would recommend that I read that I have not read, let me know. Um, I'm happy, I'm open to any suggestions. But that's everything for this week. I hope you're having a magnificent morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And as always, stay wild, star child.